Hello, so I've got this uh, oil pump removed from this slant 6 engine, this 1975 slant 6 engine, and this is the one that I haven't run it a lot, but it was suffering from some low oil pressure. The oil light would come on when it was idling. It didn't the first time, I actually didn't until I changed the oil in it, I guess, but anyway, so. Uh, it's not a huge deal to take the oil pump off with one of these, so I thought I'd just go ahead and just pull it because, as you can see, this thing's not only is it a mess externally, but it's a mess inside. I mean, it's just filthy. You can see there's stuff there. The camera doesn't, there you go. I'll show that, but that's kind of what's in the inside of it. I'll try to carefully show you there the whole engine's probably got this in it so that's on there and then i've been letting it drain but if i turn it over uh, you can kind of see pretty clearly that it's uh, it's not very clean and the concern with these is when they're not very clean it's not terrible but i mean it had oil flow through it and the gear also looks good by the way but the concern on these is these have a these have a uh, pressure regulator piston in them right here under this, uh, this screw, this bolt. And so that thing could get, you know, with the <clears throat> kind of the muck and stuff that's been in here. So if I take my finger, I can just get the glob of it right there. These gloves are fairly fresh. So that's, that's what's in the engine. So... So anyway, that in itself was not good, and then it's this is the oil that came out of it, out of the pump, which is exactly like this sample that I drew off from the bottom of the oil pan when I drained the oil out. Maybe not quite as dirty. So anyway, this thing has got to be taken apart, so we're going to do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get it secured in the vise, and we'll, we're going to take the the uh, that sending that sender adapter that I use for my gauge, I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna take the this is the standpipe for the oil filter, and this this uses this is the oil filter off of it. I'm not gonna turn it upside down because it's got a little bit of oil left in it, but that's the short oil filter that started about 1973, and there's significant debate about that, which is better. I mean. I don't know why there is a debate. If you have a larger oil filter and a smaller oil filter, which would you think filters more oil? And they have another, people say, well, I heard, I heard that the, the longer oil filter takes longer to turn the oil light off because it has to fill up. That's not true. I've had several of that. They turn off just as quick as any other. So that's false. And then people have said that these short, stand pipes don't have a drain back valve on them that's also false because i had this one off it actually came out it actually came out my mistake when i took the filter off the first time to change the oil but if we look down in here and peek down in you can see the top of it right there that's the that's the anti-drain back valve that's integral to the uh, stand pipe keep the oil filter from draining so if anybody tells you or you read that you know they're full of it they don't know what they're talking about and I'm going to take that thing off and prove that by the way and the main reason actually I took this oil pump off was that it was leaking it was leaking out of the cover right there and there's an o-ring under that cover so we're going to take that loose also but I'm not going to clean this thing until I get everything apart on it. I'm not taking the gear off of it. Nothing's wrong with the gear. But I can tell. Um, these things are known. People have had gear problems with these. They've stripped the gears out of them. And that seems to only be an issue when you um, use, like, try to use a high volume oil pump with a small gear. Um, I guess it just overloads it. But you don't normally have problems with the stock gear. I never have. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but and I do have a replacement gasket for this. No Rock Auto no longer carries them, but I found an original Mopar gasket. So anyway, we're going to do an autopsy on this thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. 
except we'll just have to see if it's worn out because once you get the cover apart there's some tests you can do on it to make some measurements you take just to see if it's uh, too far gone we try to keep the originals it's a good oil pumps and this is a, what they call a six bolt oil pump you count the bolts that mount it not not on the cover but the mounting bolts one two three four five six some of the later ones and some of the aftermarkets went, did away with those bolts so anyway all right guys well i will uh I'm going to break this thing apart here, and I'll uh, bring you back when there's something to show you. So let's go ahead and uh, work on getting this um, this bypass valve out. Um, I do not want to use the impact because that would uh, potentially shake the thing loose. So I'm curious to see if it is actually stuck. It's probably not, but the bypass valve, if you're wondering how that affects your oil pressure, it's just... It's uh, going to be a piston with a spring on one side of it, and when the oil pressure gets excessive, according to the manufacturer specifications, the spring lets the piston move, and it moves far enough it bypasses some of the oil pressure so you don't blow the filter off of it. So. <clears throat> we, you know, if it's stuck partially open, then it could be reducing the oil pressure somewhat. Uh, that leak up here. I don't know that that would do much to the oil pressure, but it would uh, probably cause a little bit of cavitation. It's pulling, if it can leak out, it can pull air in. So, And also, I was going to give you a piece of trivia. Did you know that a house finch is among the kind of birds that, if it's trapped in a, like the rafters of a building or something like that, it, can't, it, cannot, it cannot understand how to fly downward to get out? Um, that and a hummingbird. I've had rescue hummingbirds out of this garage. There's not a fence in here, but there's one There's one out in this canopy out here. So you have to put food out somewhere so it'll see the food and fly down, and then after it flies downward, it can mostly figure out how to get out. A wren, on the other hand, does not have that problem. I've had a wren get in here, a house wren or a Carolina wren, and it just zoomed right out the door when I came in. <laughs> Okay, let's see how this is going to go. This thing has probably never been out. And I'm trying to be kind of easy with the vise here. So. I don't like the way that felt. But let's... Never had one of these apart. So we're learning together. So, oh boy, should have put a cloth down on that. Something I've just learned. Oh well. Okay, so here's the here's the uh, the spring. It's in the frame. I have to kind of get used to this camera again and use it in a while. So the spring just goes in there, and you can see it's got muckety muck in it nice thick sludgy something <laughs> so we're just gonna put it back over in the to be cleaned i don't think that thing has a hang on a second i don't think that thing has a a direction oh hey lacy what you doing hey sweetie oh oh i got a wall in my hand i'm sorry you want to see who Lacey is? I can show you. Oh, I can see. <laughs> that, that was the neighbor's Labrador Retriever. And she comes to see me, but I had I had a well on my hand, so she didn't like that. I didn't want to give her that. She's a sweetheart. I wish I could have got the camera turned around. All these people, I guess, thought I hated dogs, but I love those dogs. They're good dogs. She's a sweetheart. She broke her. She broke something. I don't know what happened to her. She had some kind of serious thing that happened on her leg or something a while back, and they had to confine her for. She had to have an operating on or thing. But okay, so let me look at the back of my head here. All right, so I got to show you what I'm looking at. Cause the tubers will complain and say, I don't get to see that. You didn't show me. 
Well, I'm about to show you. So we're going to come in here and look up this hole right here. And pardon me, I have to get my studio lighting. Okay, you see up in there, the piston is up in there a couple inches. So we'll see if it'll fall out. I'll take the thing off the vise here and we'll just see if that thing will drop out. If it does not drop out, then it could be stuck one way or the other. So let's see here. Just this here. It does not come out, so it's stuck. I'm going to assume it's stuck. Um, it is stuck in. Ooh, boy. I don't know if I know how to get that out. <laughs> That's not good. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. So it did not drop out. So I think we could consider that thing stuck in there. Now, I, like I said, I haven't had one of these apart in a while. If ever. I haven't ever. I just told you that. I never had one of these parts. What I did, I did replace one many, many years ago, one of these whole entire pumps. I had this car, another car with the same problem. And back then, I was just a dumb kid. And so the only thing I knew to do was just put another pump on it, and it cured the oil light coming on and idle, but it blew up about a month later. So. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to give this thing a bath and parts washer over here and clean it up. I don't, I, won't, I don't want to take that cover off with a bunch of crap all over it. So we'll do that. But I did want to remind you, as I was about to say before I lost my train of thought, talking about history there, do not, do not, do not, do not ever, I can tell you this from any other thing I've ever worked on, do not be tempted to take something like this, like that, and run up in there and dig her out. Because if you do that, you've ruined it. Okay? There's no getting around it. Don't do that. You have to push it out from the other side. I haven't ever done that. I don't know how we're going to get in there. But somehow or another, you know, it went in. It's got to come out. It's got to be exposed to oil pressure somewhere up in there. So we're going to take this thing apart. That's why I call it an autopsy. That's right. It's not dead. But we got to go in. Maybe we should say, so maybe, I don't know, maybe exploratory surgery. Let's call it that. That's a little bit better more accurate okay guys I gotta um, I gotta move my studio here because I this is the kind of this is this is the kind of room I have here but that's okay I don't mind that but I've got to have some room so I'm going to temporarily while I'm working on cleaning I'm going to uh, put you guys your stand up in the corner for a little bit I just want to look at something while we're here let's just look on in here I want to look when I took that fitting out for the oil pressure to switch out. I thought I saw some gunk in there. So let's go, what's up here? See if I still see, yeah, something stuck on it there. Yeah, okay. All right, all right, let me do, let me give this thing a bath and we'll bring it back up here, work on it more. Okay, so if that thing doesn't look much uh, cleaner, it's cause it's not. I did do a little bit in the, in the uh, parts washer, but it is extremely filthy. So I just went ahead and just uh, got the worst of it. Yeah. That's the Saiyan 6 for you. Gotta love them. The right side of the engine is just always caked with all kinds of sludge and everything. So I don't normally like to use the impact on stuff like this because I just don't. I like to just run stuff out by hand because you can feel of it and kind of tell that something may not be feeling exactly right. So I think these are all the same. I'm going to leave them in order. So You know this thing gonna make any difference. It's gonna make a big difference. Still gonna have low oil pressure. It's pretty good, wise. You know, you get the engine revved up, but the oil pressure is good. I mean, uh, I would say good. It's 35, 40 pounds, but 
It just goes away. When it's hot, man, it just goes away to nothing. I know. I don't have to say it. Oh, I run them for years like that. Well, I have too, but the one that I did do that to blew up. So, I like to keep this one running as long as I can. Okay, so in here we should get this cover off. Should find the the ring and the rotor. The rotor's not coming out because that's affixed to the gear down here. We're not messing with that. And this cover will come off with an O-ring under it. So let me get past you guys without knocking you over, hopefully. And we'll see if we can carefully do a little pride on that cover to get it popped up. It should not give us too much of a fight, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, all right. Nope, oh, there we go. All right, that's what we have here. We have a cover, which only goes on one way. We have a probably very desiccated, dried out O-ring, which we do. Let's see if it breaks. Yep. So there you go, that's why they leak. That's why they, why they leak, so. All right, so in here, what you're looking at is you're looking at this is the rotor and this is the ring which comes out. Carefully get something out of this. Let's see if I can just pull it up. I don't have to scratch anything. Almost had it. There we go. Oh boy. Ooh. Ooh boy. That's not good. <laughs> that was not good. Not good, good, good. Can you guys see that? That's not good. I'm trying to show you that. See all those, those, those are deep gouges on there. If I lightly take a pick, there's so bad it catches. Oh shit, it's not good. So that tells us that it's had debris through the oil pump. Oh boy. Oh boy, boy, boy. Not good here. Maybe it's just a little over. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh wow. Not expecting that. But while that train's going by, I'm going to take my towel here. Just bear with me. I'm going to take the towel and kind of clean the oil off this stuff. Oof. Don't leave yet. I saw you, I know you were looking, you were thinking about it. Hang on.
That. Don't. Oh boy. One of me is terrible, I tell you. Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, so to cut to the chase, this oil pump is junk. It cannot be cleaned up. It cannot be rebuilt. It's junk. As far as I know, they don't even make rebuilt oil pumps. For these. Well, that would partially explain the low oil pressure. Wow. Okay, so the train's gone by now, mostly. All right, so all this oh no and an old man and all that, all right, what the heck am I looking at? All right, so I'm going to have to kind of coordinate the a lot here and this uh, what I'm looking at okay first thing is what's that up here that thing only had two brightness levels that sucks all right so we looked at that we saw that the, uh, the outside of this ring has got a lot of grooving in it see all that that those are grooves you can feel them they do catch your fingernails let's look inside the ring though see if I can get the Light around a little bit. Look in there on the inside of the ring. See all those pits in there? There's a bunch of pitting. See those? See right there? I'm afraid to get the same too close, so it's going to go out of focus. But there are pits all the way around this. So this thing's had fragments of something in there. And it's got wear on it pretty bad. So, okay, so also. Well, I forget which size which now. It doesn't matter because we're not going to use it. If you were going to re reuse it, you probably want to be sure you mark this beforehand. But if you look at the top of that surface of that ring, see all there? There's grooving all around it. It's rough. Catch your fingernail. It's got grooving on the other side. So, long story short, is this thing has had something run through it pretty bad. A lot of dirt, whatever. And it's the same story inside of it. I'm going to get you kind of right here where you need to be. Why is that not turning? Why are you not turning here? Because you're against me. <laughs> okay. I'm better. Maybe. Okay, so, I'm sorry. Let's see here. All right, so if we look in this thing, look at that. See how scored up that is? And it's scored around the sides. It's junk. There's no reusing this oil pump. So it's going to have to have, if not another one, just, I mean, <laughs> what I meant to say was it's going to have to have, if not just an outright new one, it's going to have to have a better used one. Which I'm considering going to the junkyard this weekend. I know where there may, may be a slant six. Well, I do know where there's a slant six, one or at least two of them, but we're maybe one, maybe one close to the house here. And we'll just get it. It's probably gonna be cheap. We'll just tear it apart. But this thing is DOA. Look at the cover. covers the same way. It's a mirror image of it, what you saw earlier, basically. And the main thing, what we're going to do also, 
the tip Mopar gives us Mopar gives us specs as far as like I think the uh, the distance from the rotor to the uh, to the side of the pump and then it may actually give a spec you measure clearance from the inside to the top inside the top somewhere in there so let me go get the the service manual and we'll do that real quick too but we're just doing that for fun because this thing is shot no no bueno no good it's junk okay fellers so we've got the good book here this is the factory service manual for 1975 i saved this from when i had another car the same year it's for plymouth and dodge and chrysler and whatever but uh it gives us in here all the tests that we can run on this to test this oil pump to see how worn out it is so it's, it just tells you starts here says clean all parts thoroughly making service oil pump should be smooth Replace pump assembly of cover scratch and groove. So that discounts it already. I mean, we can't use it. It's, they, they say it right here. You know, get rid of that. Replace it. It's junk. But we're just going to do this for fun. We're just going to see how much wear it had on it. Because, as I said, this was the one that had about 9 pounds of oil pressure, 8 pounds of oil pressure. Right okay, so the first test we're going to uh, show you how to do is you're going to lay a straight edge across the oil pump cover. You're going to see if a 15 thousandths filler gauge can be inserted between the cover and straight edge. Pump assembly should be, as if that's the case, pump assembly should be replaced. You're going to check the outer rotor thickness, which is, I call this the ring. This is actually, they're calling it the outer rotor, but it's this. So you're going to we're going to check the thickness, see how far worn down it is. Um, it says if it measures uh, 0.649 of an inch or less, in the diameter 2.469 of an inch or less, 2.469 inch, replace the shaft in both rotors. If rotor thickness is 0.649 of an inch, just over half an inch or less, replace the shaft. So anyway, it's going to show all these measurements you can do. It shows us measuring the, the rotor, outer rotor thickness, the clearance over the rotors, clearance clearance, the inner rotor thickness, which we're not going to do because I'm not going to take that thing all the way apart. You have to take the gear off to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, the measuring the clearance between rotors and the outer rotor clearance here. So, okay. Essentially, what that means is we're going to do all the, we're going to do all these tests. I'm going to do it off camera. You don't have to sit here and be bored watching me do all this crap. And then I'm going to list it uh, on a piece of paper, which of it that I can test past which did not so we'll see okay this was pretty interesting these results so i ran all the tests that i could i checked the cover flatness it passed i checked the outer rotor thickness it passed it was right on spec i checked the outer rotor diameter from edge to edge you know it passed it was actually a little bit over i tested the outer rotor to pump uh clearance which means the outer rotor, the outer rotor ring, the outside of it to the pump, it passed. I checked the clearance over the rotors. As I instruct you, I just took a filler gauge and simply uh, checked the clearance, put a flat edge across, the straight edge across the top of those rotors, and see if I could get the filler gauge in there, and it passed. It passed all those tests. But it failed the most, it failed, failed the most critical test, which was the inner to outer rotor clearance. What that means is, what failed, what's worn out on it, what's very worn out on it, is the clearance between this rotor, the inner rotor, and the outer rotor. The outer rotor is capable of turning um, and this turns here, but you have a clearance. I'm sorry, you're going to have to take my word for it. I'm not going to fool this camera adjustment again. It's too hard. To do. It's, uh, it's, it's what it is. So the book tells us, I can show you over here, but the book can read right out of it. It says if the clearance between the inner and outer rotor is 10 thousandths of an inch or more, replace the shaft in both rotors. So basically the entire well pump. So... What you're going to do is this this area right here measured it in two places 
and I'm just barely able to get a sixteen thousandths filler gauge in there. Try it over here to replicate my results. It didn't go easily, and I'd say even closer to fifteen thousandths. In fact, I may have. I think a fifteen thousandths would actually go in there easier because so just be legit about it. I'm always legit. Fifteen thousand slips right in pretty pretty well. It's pretty pretty tight, but anyway, that's the that's the most to me that's the most without without being an oil pump authority. <laughs> so that's a good channel name or something, the oil pump authority. But without being an oil pump authority, my uh, backyard mechanic know how tells me that this is. Let me put it in a, let me put it in layman's terms so that any of you guys or ladies that don't know anything about oil pumps, you'll know. But this inner rotor spins and this outer rotor is capable of moving. But essentially, it squishes the oil, it pulls the oil in out of the oil pan. And I'm not sure about this one. I ought to know this. I don't know if it filters it before the oil pump or after it's got a strainer in the oil pan that just gets out the big stuff but we have to look at it i'll put that in the i put a little blurb above here what i found out but there's oil filters right up here so anyway it's basically draws in as this thing spins it draws pulls the oil in out of the oil pan and it squishes it in here and that creates high pressure you can look up the if you want to learn how that actually happens Look that up if you want to. But it squishes the oil and then it exits the oil pump. I think through the filter. I'm pretty sure of that now. As a matter of fact, I am sure of it because when I was telling you before about this bypass, so that's to keep the probably keep it from blowing the oil filter up or off. So it would have to be filtering the oil after it goes through the pump. That's why this pump is taking such hell. So. Anyway, so anything basically is coming from the oil pan has got sucked into this thing, and people have had these actually lock up. But so anyway, that's that's the critical. This this here is the squish that clearance I showed you. That's the squish area. So my feeling is uh, they would not give a spec, a pass or fail spec for that if it wasn't very important. So any of this. Anything that's worn, even, even these grooves here, I mean, these grooves can pass oil. That's probably why, you know, the O-ring was in terrible shape, but that's probably why, assuming the oil pump never had been apart, I'm, I'm confident of that, it looks original, then probably the main reason that it started to leak is not totally due to the fact that the O-ring seal was petrified. It was. But probably what happened is this thing started getting these grooves in it and it started passing. You can see there's a lot of discoloration right here, right right behind where that O-ring goes. And so it's probably just starting to push oil, more oil. The oil was not going out of the pump. Uh, you know, it was bleeding, I think I would say, through all these grooves. Now that's just an idea, but I did look at this um, somewhere on this, one of these rotors. I'm not sure I showed you that, but um, so yeah, yeah. To finish that thought, it's worn out. I mean, it definitely is worn out. It was only really worn out measurably in one area, but there was a spot in here. Uh, one of these, I don't know if it's a rotor, may not have been, but uh, it had to be the rotor. I thought I saw something here that had just man, it had a huge scarf on it well I don't see it now maybe it did that was my imagination but anyway so this thing it's junk it's gone so no more of this it has to be replaced can't rebuild it now now if the body of it was in good shape it didn't have all those that scoring in the body of the pump you could probably get away with just rebuilding it I don't see why not but this one's it's done for so you may ask well what caused that well it's very easy to explain what caused that when you drive and drive and drive and you don't change the oil because there's still oil in it 
that's what happens. It wears the oil pump out. That the score marks are just dirt in the oil over. You know, probably this thing based on the amount of sludge in it, it's probably got twenty thousand mile oil changes, twenty five thousand mile oil changes, if that. Lots of short trips. So your your oil your oil suspends dirt in it. If you don't believe that, look at this sample I took here. See how black this is? And I'll swear on the Holy Bible that engine that oil only ran for I don't know, 30 minutes at the most. Didn't even drive it away from the... Your auto, well, I drove down the driveway and back. And that's it. And it's that black. So, oil... It's got detergent oil. It's It cleans, you know, helps clean the inside of your engine. And it, the oil also suspends the stuff. But the problem with that is, is when the oil stays in there for thousands and thousands of miles longer than it should, it gets dirty and black. And not only do the additive packages wear out in it, but the uh, oil is just dirty. It's dirty oil. That's why you have to change it. So the the good reverend that owned this car from new apparently do not believe or understand the necessity of changing oil. So that's the long and short of it. He's probably a good person, but he ain't changing no oil. So... Anyway, I don't, you know, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of friends because I'm pretty blunt spoken, so I'll do that right now. If you don't change the oil in a car or truck, especially one that you pay a lot of money. Anyway, as I was about to say, if you don't change the oil and filter in a vehicle, especially, like I said, the one you pay a lot of money for, you're pretty stupid because the stuff, it's not that expensive. If you're lazy, too lazy to get in there and do it, just take it in someplace, have it done. So, the uh, spec on this thing was supposed to be... I think you change them every 3,000 miles under normal conditions. And let's see if it shows in here, those capacities. Recommended maintenance services. Yeah, I don't see it, but anyway. That's why they get gunked up like that. And then they don't change the PCV valve and they use bad oil and they just, you know, whatever. We all know this. Everybody that has a car, a truck, they know this. So anyway, they didn't do it. So this engine, I'm going to put an oil pump on it and I'm going to clean it out as best I can down low in the, in the crankcase. But if this thing gets 3,000, if it gets 5,000 miles out of it, I'll be shocked. I'll, I'll show you the odometer. And if it blows up, then... I'll show that too. I'm not going to try to blow it up. I have blown one up before, accidentally, but, uh, okay, so. All right, guys, well, I'm going to do one last little thing. I'm going to pull out this uh, standpipe, this short filter standpipe, and I'm going to illustrate to everybody that may be wondering that it does have a drain back valve. So, anti, anti drain back valve. Stay tuned. Okay, so anyway, going to make this quick and run out of memory here, but this thing definitely has the uh, anti-drain back valve in it. There's the proof. It's in there. The proof is in the pudding. Cannot see through it. Okay, believe it. Hi. Hi, right, guys. Thanks for watching this. Uh, I'll keep you updated on the pump situation, what I plan to do about that, what we come up with. See ya.